Let's go. Um, yo, couple more, couple more pieces. All right, let's get started. There, there's one other study abroad program. I don't know if I mentioned this the other day. It's some colleagues of mine in Eastern Europe. Very cool program if you have an interest in Eastern Europe in particular, uh, in Croatia. Very, really cool study abroad program. So if you, if you have any interest in that, um, and, I, and it would be interesting to go to do study abroad with them as well. Very cool people. Uh, just see me after class. I have a couple flyers um, I'll give to you. Okay, so here's the deal. Let me say a couple things about this assignment. First one is due Friday at midnight. Friday at midnight. The Dropbox closes at midnight. Actually, 11.59 p.m. So here's what you need to know. First off, if you watch that video that I sent out, that's really most of what you need to know. But here's what I want to say. You don't have to do this via Facebook at all, by any stretch of the imagination. So that video that I made, I made it with my phone. It took me a total of 20 minutes to make the video, edit it quickly on my phone, using iMovie on my phone, and upload it to YouTube. And in 20 minutes total, it was done. So I can imagine being with someone and watching one of those videos and having my phone and just recording a conversation. Upload it to YouTube because you if you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube account. And if you've never uploaded a video to YouTube, how do you feel about the fact that your 56-year-old professor uploads videos to YouTube all the time and edits them and the whole nine yards? You know what I mean? Dude, do you upload to YouTube? Do you know how? Do you know how? One video a while back. Have you made videos? All right, cool. So look, that would, that's a really easy way to do the assignment. Just videotape you or use audio and, and then capture that, grab that, and upload it to the Dropbox. It's very simple. You can do this lots of different ways. You can have an email exchange with somebody. Just save the email file and upload it to Dropbox. There, there are so many ways you can do it. The point is, we want you to, I want you to have to have, to have conversations with people outside of class about some of the pure material from class. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna actually give you a lot of what I think are really good things today. What I need to tell you is we're really flexible with this assignment. It's the first time we've ever done it. So once again, you do not have to use Facebook. I know a lot of people are morally opposed to Facebook. Great. Just, I'm morally opposed to Facebook. So you, you got it. Do, do it any way you want. Be creative. It's simple. Use the one button studio over in Petit if you want. You could do it there. Just take a friend of yours over there. Have an argument about one of the videos or a conversation, whatever you want it to be. Okay? It can be anything. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's because you haven't read the assignment or have you watched the video. So you really, that's the place to start, certainly. Bro. How many times can we uh, all the same person? You could do the same person all semester. In fact, that would be kind of cool. Like you could. Yeah, that'd be fine. You know, you could just have an ongoing debate conversation. It's mostly better if you don't, but if you do, whatever. I don't know. Okay? And cool. if you guys are screenshotting stuff on a PC, just use Command P and then put everything into a Word document and then upload those screenshots to Angel. And if you're on a Mac, you can do the same thing with uh, Command Shift 3 or 4 and then put four. it into a preview. It's so simple, y'all. It is so simple. Okay? Hi, right, ma'am. So, um, I'm going to give you some stuff today. <clears throat> can we actually, can we go back one real fast? I want to say one final thing, just so you know. I'm trying to do short segments in this class. So that you don't, you don't have to share 12 and 15 and 20 minute videos, okay? Some of the stuff that we do that's 15 or 20 minutes is really interesting. But I recognize that people in your lives don't want to watch me 
this class for 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, I, I get that. So I'm trying to do as many short segments as I can. But the problem is by the time I really kind of air something out, it gets long. So just understand I'm working on it. Today I'm really working on doing shorter ones. So, however, in doing that, we are going to talk about Trump and today and the conflict that is arising or that is becoming more and more evident, actually, with the election of Trump. First off, with, with the election season itself, and then with the election of Trump. So, I just feel as though it, it is my moral and ethical duty as an instructor of sociology who is teaching critical thinking which is so essential for a class on race relations, to address the conflict that is very clear in the U.S. and in the world today, as is evidenced by what happened on Saturday in particular. And so I, I just feel it's, it's my responsibility. And I want to steer into the curve a little bit on this election and talk about a few issues in ways that maybe you just haven't really thought about that's from some different perspectives so that we can move this thing forward in some interesting ways, okay? Is that cool? So I'm going to hit five different things. And the first, I want to address this issue of Trump being horribly sexist. And... Everything that that is about. And people see this in very, very different ways. And yet, people don't see it in different ways. So, first, this is this, this is text of the transcript where Trump was caught on a hot camera talking about some woman reporter. He says, so read that, Okay. That's transcript. So somebody caught him on a hot mic. He didn't know he was being recorded. This was a number of years ago. But he hasn't changed at all. I mean, come on, this guy. He would have said that yesterday. That could be yesterday. Well, maybe not yesterday, but it could have been a few months ago. Or six or ten years ago. So that's what he said about a woman who was a reporter. So they pulled up on a bus and they saw this woman... And this guy, some other reporter, was asking him about her. And that was his response. Now, some of you don't know about this, including, you know, those of you who, yeah, many of you actually don't know about this. So this is, a lot of Trump people, or anti-Trump people, especially women, people who are, have any, even a modicum of interest in women's issues, in empowering women, in sexism and so on, to them, this is just absolutely beyond reproach. I mean, you can't even imagine that anybody could support anybody who would say this, okay? Now, let me, I'm going to help you with it by, I need, I need a couple, I need a couple men just who can just work with me on this, okay? I need a couple volunteers, men. Anybody? Now, someone who hasn't volunteered yet. Bro, you and bro, you. Have you, neither of you have volunteered, right? All right. All right, here we go. So now, imagine 
that this conversation is being recorded, and it's Sam Richards talking to two of his students, or two of his TAs, okay? Sam, me, Sam Richards, instructor of Social 119, teach at Penn State, having a conversation with a couple of his TAs. Yeah, dude. Yeah, see her, man? Yeah, bro, she's pretty hot. Yeah, dude. I'd definitely smash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's at least a nine. Dude. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I tried to fuck her. Uh, she was married. I moved on her like a bitch, man, but I couldn't get anywhere. Damn, dude, don't let that stop you, you know? She's just... Nah, she was married, dude. She dude, was I married. heard she gets mad head. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Listen, man. But, you know, but the problem is, man, the problem is... Now, I don't know, I see her now, she's like a big phony. She's got, like, all of her phony tits and everything. It's like, oh, man. It's totally changed her look, I gotta say. Like, I gotta say. Even better. Nah. Nah, but, you know, I, got, I always, I just gotta use Tic Tacs. Just in case I start kissing her, you know what I mean? Gotta use Tic Tacs. Gotta always have them. You know, I'm like, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful women. You can imagine that, right? Me? I'm attracted to beautiful women. Beautiful women. I just start kissing them. I just start kissing them. No, I feel you, man. That happens to me sometimes, too. Dude, yeah, I'll bet, man. Yeah, no, it, 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 it's like a magnet, man. You just kiss. You know what I mean, dude? You don't, you don't even wait, dude. You just kiss. Yeah, why even ask him? I mean, like just make the first reaction. move. No, I mean, dude, you're a listen, man. But, just show him. But listen, when you're a star like me, when you're a star like me, seriously, um, they let you do it. They let you do it, dude. You know, you, when you're a star like me, you can do anything, man. You just, you just grab them in the pussy, dude. They let you do anything. You just grab them in the pussy. Yeah. Okay, got that? <laughs> okay, so now, here's what I want to know. That comes out, and it's in onward state, it's in the collegian, you're listening to me having a conversation with these two guys. What's your name, bro? Nav. Nav? Daniel and Nav. Having a conversation with Daniel and Nav. And, Penn's, and you find out that I don't have a job tomorrow, because that came out tonight, talking about a graduate student, or another professor, or some woman who works at Penn State, and that's the conversation. Yeah, I just grab them in the pussy. In other words, I just sexually assault them. I force myself on them. How many of you, when I get fired from Penn State for that revelation, how many of you are going to write a letter to Eric Barron on my behalf or my boss, and say, oh, man, no, Sam Richards, he's like a really good guy. You shouldn't fire him. Like, come on, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that conversation. So he sexually assaults, or so he does that. I don't know. You call it sexually assault. We call it, but it's Sam Richards, you know? Like, he's cool. Like, how many of you are going to write a letter on my behalf? How many of you are going to stand up? How many of you are going to start a protest in front of Old Main saying, no, you shouldn't fire this guy? So now, here's the deal. Nobody, not a single person, nobody, one guy, one person, two, maybe three, all men, right? Anybody else? So listen, three people, four, a woman, all right, four people aren't going to get my job back. And so here's the, here's the question I have, or here's the issue. Can... Trump supporters imagine, can you just for a moment imagine how people who support women's rights feel about that? About that conversation and about this guy who could do that and who could say those things? Just like how many people would used to think that Sam Richards was a cool guy? I used to think he was a really cool guy. And then I heard that. I'd never take a class with him. I'd never even want to be in the same building with him. Never. I tell all my roommates, don't ever take a class with that guy, this guy, whatever. So can you imagine how just really just outraged people would be? And that's me. And now it's this guy. And what's the difference? What's the difference? Right. So thanks, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing.
Now, Jiggy. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think about women who voted for Trump? It doesn't make any sense to me. Doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? Like, how so? Me being me. I'm tr guys, like, side note, I'm trying to be like a self aware. I'm trying to be like a self awareness coach. So that's all about emotional intelligence, that's all about self awareness, um, where you are present in your life. So when you tell me that there are women out there who accept this behavior, and not only accept it, but vote as like the leader of an entire nation. Okay. That's telling me that you're submitting your self-respect. I'm not allowed to curse in this class, so I'm not gonna say any words, but that's telling me that you're s submitting your self-respect to jerks like him. Okay. So I'm not, I, I'm not concerned about Trump. I'm concerned about the woman who's not even aware, who doesn't even have the self-respect to realize that this completely violates her rights and it concerns me about her present relationships, whatever the one that she's in, whether she's married or not to a Republican who also voted for Trump. It's not my business, but I'm more so scared for the women who support Trump. Okay, so let me help you with it. Let me help you to see how you could vote for Trump. It's not very difficult. Go to the next slide. First off, People voted along party lines. Republicans voted for a Republican, Trump. Democrats voted for a Democrat, Clinton. Didn't change very much. Look, 93% of Republicans voted for Romney. 89% of Republicans voted for Trump. People vote on party lines. So it didn't matter, because you're not thinking about the particulars. You're thinking about the party. And the person who represents the party doesn't much matter. It's the party. Here, look at this next one. Here. For whom did white voters cast their votes? 59% of white people in the U.S. voted for Romney versus Obama in the le previous election. 58% of white people voted for Trump versus 37% who voted for Clinton in this election. In other words, voting on party lines doesn't matter. And you know what that is? It's just not seeing what you don't really want to see. Here's an example. Christians. How many of the Christians in here believe in Noah's Ark? How many of you believe in Noah? How many Christians in the United States believe in Noah's Ark? Noah's Ark, y'all, there's like, what, 20 to 30 million species in the world? Somebody built a boat large enough for all those species to mean it use basic common sense here how big was the boat as big as rhode island so somehow back in time the earth was flooded and noah built a boat and he put all the species of life in that one of each male female so you got about 20 to 30 million i don't know what it is it's a lot so you got to double that now that's a big boat but you know we live in this place of denial it's like yeah but i want to believe in the christian story so, I, yeah, I hear that, and it's kind of weird, but I'll just turn my attention somewhere else. Or how many of you have siblings or parents who are, now I can swear, who are assholes? They really are assholes. They really are. You love them anyway. Yeah, my brother. God, he's such an asshole. God, he is such a jerk. He's like, you could do a long list of everything, but I love him anyway. And I would stand by him. Oh, yeah, I, I would defend him. If someone else calls him an asshole, you'll defend him. But, you know, you're like, why? 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 Because he's your brother? Why would you do that? Who cares? It doesn't matter. It's one after another. There are all sorts of ways in which we take things that we don't want to see and we just sort of put this black cloth over them, and then we move on with our lives and pretend that those things don't exist. And so I, you can do that with Trump. It's the same thing. It's like, I, you know, he said that stuff, but lots of people say that stuff. How many white people in there have parents or grandparents who regularly dropped an N-bomb? Nah, but my grandfather, 
yeah, but he's not racist. No, but he's cool. No, 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 but he wouldn't discriminate. Really? <laughs> really? Okay, I get that. All right, whatever. What do you mean by discriminate? What do you mean by not racist? If you talk in a certain way, if you refer to people in a certain way, if you have certain attitudes toward people, like Muslims, let's say, then I'd say there are certain things I could say about you. But, you, but if you want to live in, that, in the blind spot, you take a step back and you say, oh yeah, but no, nah, but they're not really like that. But they really like it. But if they, really, they really treat everyone equally and so on and so forth. You see what I mean? It's like we just turn our heads. So it's not difficult to imagine people turning their heads with Trump. If you can pretend that Noah, there was someone named Noah who actually really did build an ark, you certainly can pretend or have the idea that Trump really isn't a, a sexist pig. It's like, whatever, there are more important issues to deal with. There are really important issues to deal with. So he said those things about women. Whatever, I got these really important issues that are much more important than that. And that's where I think, that's why I voted for him and that's where I'm going to put my attention. Anybody could say that. It's very simple. Just like you'd say, yeah, my father is a real jerk. But I love him anyway. Why? You, do you go around loving jerks? Why do you love jerks? Why would you love jerks? Why would you love your asshole brother if he's an asshole? Oh yeah, I love asshole. I'm an asshole. I guess I'm an asshole. You know, I love assholes, so. <laughs> you see how it is? There is or isn't. What is it? But that's, we can do that. People can just, we can just sort of s separate our lives in this way. So all of the, ant the people who don't like Trump, and you see that, and you think, oh, that's just so horrific. It's not really. We all do it. We all do it. Meaning that we all just choose to turn our attention away from the things that are contradicting and problematic and don't fit with our worldview. Is that cool? Jiggy, does that make sense? Can I just say something? Go ahead. Uh, Twitter, Twitter, if you want to turn to your local Twitters. Uh, there are women who voted for Trump saying stuff like, I'm a woman, I voted for Trump, that by no means allows one to say, I submitted my self-respect. Yeah. That's cool, good for you. But at the end of the day, you supported somebody who makes it okay. Yeah, but we all do that, dude. No, but this doesn't make saying. it okay. We all do that. What about the self-respect of the people in this classroom who have parents who, are, who physically abuse either you or your siblings? Or your grandparents who physically abused your parents, but you still see your grandfather or your grandmother, and you're still like, okay, but I still got to say hi. And you gotta, Why? Where's your self-respect? Where's your self-respect? If I saw a parent or my uncle or somebody that physically abusing their child, I would just be like, hasta luego, forever, in a day, I'm done. The relationship is over. Finito. So... I don't, I don't see, we all do it. We all do it. It's just how we want to choose to think about self-respect. It's just where. So this is a place where you put your foot down, but I can put my foot down somewhere else. Yeah. It doesn't make sense still? If my brother is terrible at driving, okay, and I asked him, uh, well, somebody told me, uh, would you let your brother drive? And you know that you will die if you let him drive. Yeah. Would you let him? No, no but how He's about a terrible driver. I love him. <laughs> but would you let him Dude, drive? Does he drive in State College? Let me know. No, he's not here, actually. Oh, okay, but I'm good, just right. giving you an example. All right, okay, good. Well, that's so me, safe. actually. Like, yeah. my brother would say that about me. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Dude, don't drive around me. Yeah, no, it's lots of things. It's like, look. It's, it's drinking. It would be drinking and driving. How many of you let your friends drink and drive? Like, how many of you drink it? I mean, I don't know. It's just on and on. The problem is, again, it's like this Gandhi thing. You know, Gandhi always said, when you, when you, I think he said it one time. I don't know. Maybe it's an old myth. But you point one finger at other people. You have three fingers pointing back at you. And that's really important, you know. So we all do it. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I mean, the point about Gandhi is, brings up an interesting point because politicians and historical figures, artistic figures, they have all these different aspects, all these differences in their personality, the ways they express themselves in art or their political views. Yeah. And 
when you're listening to a, or watching an artist or you're voting for a politician, you take all those things into account. And some things might be deal breakers. So I can see, I perfectly understand people who are like, no, I will not vote for Trump no matter what because of those positions, even if they agreed with every single political position. Like, that's a hypothetical. Yeah, right. Whereas, and that happens all the time. Like, it could be a political position of his that you're like, I like everything else, but that one breaks it for me. Yeah, it could or be. Or they could all fit. But then, like, Gandhi, Gandhi had sex with children. And John Lennon beat women. And Miles Davis nearly killed his wife multiple times. But Miles Davis, I still listen to Miles Davis because he still is the greatest jazz musician yeah. of all time. The lore about Gandhi, by the way, is he didn't have sex with children. He slept. Well, okay. He was also... To test himself. He also had, you know... And but there Mar are all sorts of things. Yeah, listen. everyone, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, all yeah. every president ever, they all have different personality quirks that, you know, yeah. knock them down a level. And you have... To, okay. And it, it, it makes sense for people to, you know put a benchmark and yeah. be like, that's my stopping point. Yeah. But I can see people who don't. Yeah, listen, every, everyone, here's the issue, right? Everybody has different benchmarks, okay? And one person's benchmark, for one person, I know somebody, I have a colleague who's really smart, very thoughtful, really aware politically and socially and economically and so on. Her benchmark is abortion. She is just against abortion, period, under any circumstance whatsoever. And that's just her thing. I'm like, how do you get there? How did you get there? It's just her thing. I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm not going to argue with that. I could make an argument. This, I couldn't vote for personally a, a person who was captured on camera saying that. I just couldn't. But, you know, whatever. That's me. Can I just say something? Yeah. Because I don't, I, I'm, I'm confused because I don't think what I say was like, portrayed correctly and maybe that was my fault and like my mistake in the way that I delivered my message but I'm not because just because you you mentioned Gandhi and like one point uh one finger one way and three fingers the other way just because you said that I think I was misunderstood or I misportrayed myself in the way that I expressed my thoughts yeah. I'm not judging women who voted for Trump yeah no like, I don't hear I didn't I'm hear not that. pointing fingers well, and then getting three fingers I'm just saying I'm concerned and when I'm concerned for you, I'm not saying I'm judging you for your decisions and opinions. I'm just saying I'm concerned. And yeah. if you're a woman who voted for Trump and you're saying that you have self-respect, dope, do it, go ahead. But like, it when it comes to the president of the America and you have somebody like that as a leader who says stuff like that and you, it's not even just about you anymore. It's like it, the entire nation, it's the entire world. It's not just you as a woman and how you're portrayed and how you're treated by other men. It's like women of every single country of the world, basically. Yeah. So I'm not judging Trump supporters. I'm just concerned. It was a judgment though, really. Why? Because essentially you said it was, it's a, I think, what is judgment? Judgment is attributing positive or ne it's it's a judgment is a is exclaiming the rationality I think behind someone's statements or thoughts or beliefs without really knowing what those are I think that's a judgment so it was a judgment in a way but I hear where you're coming from yeah um, I hear where you're coming from I can and I buy that okay but anyway are, are you confused? Is, are people, more, are you at least confused? Are you more confused? Can you see it from different perspectives? Or can we, at the very least, what's most important in a race class, in this class, what's most important is to understand the ways in which all of the people we think are exhibiting bad behavior in some way, shape, or form, like are racist or sexist or homophobic or whatever it is, how all those people, we do very similar things. That's what's most important. Starting to understand race relations is, be, it, understanding race relations begins with ourselves. Okay? It starts right there. So I can't really understand why other people think and do the things they do if I don't understand how I do it very similarly. In any case, that segment right there, that should give you something to play off of. Let's do another one. I need three more, I need three more volunteers and they all have to be Black, African American, not like African, not Caribbean, ideally African American, bro. Who, no, wait, hang on, hang on, who did not vote for Obama and who did not, no, hang on, hang on, bro, who did not vote for Trump 
who either A, voted for Clinton or support Clinton and or support Obama, voted for Obama or definitely would have voted for Obama. Two, three. Okay, so you're an Obama guy? It's Obama Nation right here. You're Obama? I'm sorry. You like Obama? Oh, I love Obama. You love? Uh, uh, oh, seriously? For Obama? Barack or Michelle? I wish Michelle. Okay, what's your name? My name is Genevieve Lodry. Genevieve. Dude. Kel. Kel? Keith. What is it? Keith. Keith? Keith. 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 Dude, I, you, just so you all know, I have tinnitus really bad, and so I, from playing drums for too many years, and I, it's really hard for me to hear all. So Kel, Genevieve, Genevieve, and Keith. All right, y'all. So Obama people, loving Obama. All right. Let's go to the next slide. All right. So one of the things that people say a lot is that Obama. Uh, right now, what I'm hearing a lot is Obama and Clinton, certainly, as opposed to Trump, really supported people, in particular people of color, and in particular real people, like average Americans, like real people, not like the, just the rich. So I hear that a lot, right? Are you, aren't you there? Would you basically say that? Mm -hmm, sure. You would say that? You would say that? Well, of course you would say that. Would you say that? I would say that they said that. All right, okay. Got it. All right. But you would say it. Um, so here's the deal. Next question. So between 1983 and today, and today, but I only have data from 2000, the data I'm going to show you is from 2010, a lot of new wealth was created. A lot of new wealth, y'all. A lot of new wealth was created, not only in the world, but also in the United States, but particularly in the United States. We're only going to look at the U.S., so new wealth. And so the question becomes, who got all that new wealth? Who got it? Right? So where did it go? In whose hands did it go? So look at this next slide. So this is from the IRS. So 74.2% of all of that new wealth that was created hundreds of billions upon billions upon billions of dollars, probably trillions of dollars, 74.2% went to the top 5%, the richest 5% of people in the United States, okay? 16% went to the next, what do you say, the one-fifth, okay? So that means 90% of the wealth that was created, all that wealth went, into the, went to the, into the pockets of the richest 10% of people in the United States. The bottom 60%, the bottom 60% actually lost money. I mean, they got, they got less. They, got, they, they, not only, they, they, they not only did they get none of the wealth, but they actually lost money. So their real income and wealth and so on went down. So, okay, so that's who got it. Okay, but that doesn't really say Obama, because we don't know Obama. It's like, okay, this is really pre-Obama, but we're seeing a pattern here. So, let's look at the next one. During the George Bush years, the wealthiest 1% of Americans received 65% of the income gains that occur between the years 2000 and 2008. That was a lot of money in income gains, you all, right? During the first five years of Barack Obama, 2009 to 2014, the wealthiest 1% received what percent of the income gains? So in the Bush years, we saw the previous slide, and then we see the Bush years. What would you say? What do you say, bro? Um, I, don't, I would say C, 78. You'd say C? Yeah, 78. What would you say, bro? I would guess D, 95. What would you say? D. You'd say D? What would you say? Bro? C, what would you say? B, what would you say? What would you say, bro? Yeah? Bro, come on, man. This is your chance right now, dude. Come on, you got one last chance to redeem yourself. Go ahead, what would you say? B, B, oh my God, black man, you are just, you're
hard for me, bro. You're making it hard for me. Listen, we'll come back, though. I'll give you another chance in the next class, all right? Calculated transformation of the economy in a shift of new wealth and new income into the hands of the very people who were calling all the decisions. Democrats and Republicans, they all were employing the same people. They're on the same team. Barack Obama's on the same team as Donald Trump. Donald yeah, Trump is on the same team yeah. as Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I think that Barack Obama's intention was to solidify the middle class, whether that's lower or upper middle class. So it's Donald Trump's, by the way, also. That's what he said. Right, but right. That's what he says. Um, yeah. He hasn't really been given the time to prove any of those yeah, okay. intentions. But I think that that Obama gave the middle class kind of the ambition that they needed to hold steady the wealth that they held in the middle, because the middle is what keeps America sturdy okay. and important, if you ask me. But I think that the lower class was ignored, and the upper class was promised something that they didn't need to be given. Um, and I think it was reinforced by Donald Trump's administration and his platforms, and that's why they voted for him. Okay, so, so here, let me, let me, do you have something, bro? Mm -hmm. Well, I, me personally, I come like, uh, like, I come from a like, de democratic, I guess, background, as you can, I guess, guess. Um, but at the same time, I don't, when you say, oh, you're Obama, Obama guy, like, I wasn't able to vote in that election, but me personally, I don't look at Obama. People might judge him for that. I'm like, oh, people say he's the best president ever. I never say this. I never say this. If I could vote then, I would have voted him. Why? Because he's black. I'm black. He's black. I'm voting for the black guy. Dude, that's, hang on. <laughs> he's half black. He that's, was half that's what black. it. That's what it Fully is. Fully black. 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 Black is black. <laughs> but, it only takes one drop. Like, but me personally, I don't never look at the presidents like, uh, oh, he was the best president. Me personally, I don't. I'm not educated enough. I don't. Uh, follow politics enough. All right. I, I don't know the facts enough to look and see the stats. Who's okay. the better president? Well, I'm, help, I'm gonna help you. Let's keep going. But where's this data coming from? So let me help you with another one. Next one. <laughs> so here's wealth accumulation and the racial wealth gap in the, back, gap in the United States. I didn't bring Asians in. Later we'll talk about Asians. Here's wealth, right? Median wealth. Median wealth, okay? White families versus black families, Latino families. So white families. It's about, it's a little over $110,000 is the median wealth for average white, for the white family. So each white family has about that much wealth. So if you take all your debt and you subtract all, all, your, all your wealth, all the money you have and the resources you have and subtract all the debt, including money you own in your house and so on and so forth, that's median wealth. Look at black families. Black families would need $104,000, each black family, to get up to where white people are. And Latinos would need $102,000 to get up to where white people are. In other words, the wealth is already in the hands of white people and it's staying in the hands of white people. And it doesn't seem like Barack Obama did much to change that. But let me help. Maybe he did with income. Next one. Here's income. 2009 for black, median income for blacks, 2009. And here it is in 2014. So, granted, he didn't have very much time, but how much more time are we going to give him? You know what I mean? How, how long have you? I'm, so, I'm so sorry. Just because I've been here for a very long time. I'm taking quite a few statistics. May you go back to your last slide? All right, go ahead. Okay. Uh-oh, right. uh-oh, got him. Got him. Got him. Because by assumption yeah. that you told us this is, this is the accumulation of wealth, right? Yeah. This is Without the, the representation, representation. The average white family. So right. hang on, let's be clear. Upon this is median wealth. Great. For the average white family. So that is showing us so this graph without the actual representation of debt, right? So by proportion, it's not represented. And it would be very importantly represented <laughs> based on <laughs> yeah. the be percentages careful. of interest and all other types of blackmail that blacks and Latino families are subjected to, right? So my family, who came straight from Haiti, you could have said they swam here, has a wealth, <laughs> right? I live in Montclair, New Jersey, the upper middle class yeah. suburb, right? My parents are swimming in their debt. That's but not wealth, then. But, no, but, but their that's wealth, wealth, it doesn't matter because their wealth still surpasses it. No, 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 not it's not. No, 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 listen. Wealth is everything. Right, but according to statistics, a proper graph would show no, it won't. where we started, Right? It would show the, the wealth gap, and it would also show the median in which 
No, it won't. We it's are That's a black woman, no, bro. Right? Chill. It no. should, but you ain't winning that one. Statistics should. Have, uh, let me explain. Let me explain. How much? How much is your, your family's house worth? About. Um, after renovations. Yeah, go ahead. How much do you think you can sell it for right, right now? now um, do I get to give location? Cause no, it no, no, just how much do you think it, well, yeah. Right now, well, given outside, it's a suburb outside of Manhattan, it's worth about 550. 550? Right. How much do they owe on it? Uh, maybe 300,000. Okay, so then that means they have 250,000 in wealth in that house. Right. That's, that goes into their wealth. Right. They own any cars? No. I okay. live in a very modest family. Okay, so you don't own any cars. Because we're Haitian. All right, got it. <laughs> So you don't own any cars, How, and then all the money in the bank, all the money that we your have stocks the house, are worth. And then we have me in college, and that's all you okay. can just about. Afford. Okay, got it. And right. there must be bank accounts. You had the bank accounts in. You subtract any debt. After all that is the wealth. It doesn't matter what the debt is. It's irrelevant. Wealth? No, no, no. It shouldn't be shown. It doesn't matter because this is taking all of your the goods and s that you can quantify in some ways and put a price to it and subtract your debt from those things, everything that you owe somebody else, and that's your wealth. And for white people, on average, the average white family, including the billionaires and the poor people living outside of state college in trailers, for example, on at the median right there is about $110,000. And compare that to all these families, that means that white people, y'all, got a lot of money compared to black people and Hispanic people in the United States. It's a lot of money. There's a huge difference. And what we're seeing is not much happened in the Obama administration to change that. And so not much is going to happen in the, in the Trump administration to change that. But the idea is that lots of Obama people have this idea that, hang on, Trump is now... Obama did so many good things for the United States, and Trump is now going to lead us into this really terrible place. It's like, no, 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 no. Hang on, y'all. No. It's like nothing changed, and nothing will change. It's going to continue in the same way. I don't think that, like, because uh, even on Twitter, like, when Trump won, that my, like, one of my friends was so dramatic to cry about the situation. I'm like, yo, you're still going to make money, and you're still going to lose money. Like, it's been a system how it has been for years and years to come, so... People scared about this whole Trump administration. I'm just like, dude, my only job here, my only job is to confuse people. And at least, at the very least, the Obama people who have this idea that somehow it was great or it would have been great if Hillary Clinton got elected. It's like we have to think critically and carefully about what the issues are. That's my job. Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, I'm not saying that Obama was a perfect president by any means, and of course, like, the economy, yeah, hey, what's up? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm not saying that the economy uh, between Barack Obama and Trump is really, like, going to be that big of a change, but it's more the social aspects, I think, that have people riled up than the economy. Like, it's hard when you see graphs like this because you think, like, well, of course, like, white families are going to be the majority, like, earners because they have a history of being the majority. Like, a lot of white people are already, like, in powerful positions, yeah. like CEOs and stuff like that. So, of course, like, that's, they're not going to lose their job in eight years, and they're not going to lose their job in the next four years. So the graphs are probably going to remain the same. And, of course, a president wants whoever's in charge for the economy to keep going. So, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's why the same people have been in charge. But it's the social issues that are the problem. Like, you can't have a president, like, every, Barack Obama is different than Trump, and you can't say that they're the same because... Yes, thank you. He said, grab him by the pussy. Like, you think Obama would have said that? Like, He would have not been fuck? in office if he would have said that. I'm sorry. I really respect this last woman, and I know I don't have it the worst in this country at all. But already papers are being signed for, like... Um, anti-abortion and I know oh, that's a religion issue for a lot of people or maybe they're just against it but like he literally said that that environmental issues like yeah. aren't real already like you think Obama would have said that like listen dude come on like I, I but I want to say like I don't think I don't I don't think that the women I don't think that the women who voted for Trump are 
like I saw on Twitter that someone was like, you think that um, like my mom is, it, it, someone said like, tweeted like, my mom, you think my mom wants to be assaulted or something like that? It's like, no, dude, no one wants any women to be assaulted, but you can't have Republican or, or Democrat or liberal or socialist or communist or whatever, like no one wants a woman to be assaulted, but we can't have a man in power saying that a woman can be assaulted and has probably assaulted women in the past. So, so what's the, why not? We do. Why, 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 let me ask you this question. Yeah. Why do you choose that issue? Why is it that issue and it's not another issue? This is what I'm asking. For me personally? Yeah. Cause I for, mean, again, it's what you said before, like people have lines, like people draw their own lines and that's. Yeah. So you draw yours there. I mean, I feel this personally, is, I feel personally no one should be disrespected at all. Like if he, he came up black people, Latinos, everything. I feel like if you cross a line and you're supposed to be the president of the United States, you're supposed to be inclusive of everybody. Crossing any line, you're done for me. Just you're done. Okay, so listen though. That but here's my job. You ready? Yep. My job is to now hold you against the wall like I've held That's other people. That's totally you ready? fine. Yeah. So the environment is important for you. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. You know what Hillary Clinton said about fracking and about environmentalists? I'm sure she said, yeah, go for it because it's a business and you know that what they're... she said? She said environmentalists and anti-frackers need to get a life because I'm supporting fracking. And you know what she said to the public? It's like, no, we have to support the environment. You know what Hillary Clinton would have done for climate change? What do you think she would have done to slow down climate change? What do you think she would have done? Excuse me. No, hang on. Hang on. What do you think I mean, she would have done? Honestly, I mean, it's really like... What do I think she would have done? I don't think she would have blatantly said that like the climate change, like, the climate change doesn't exist. But so uh, what does it matter if I say? Dude, it example, matters because he's saying grab him by the pussy. Like no, no, that's no. my issue. Like that's all I'm no, no, saying. No, no, hang on, hang on. No, that's good. Stay with that. That that's your issue. Okay, okay? I'm yes. That's I fine. I totally understand, and I'm not saying. But th that's another thing. It's like, uh, yeah, right. Clinton was not would not have been the perfect president either. Okay. She would have not been a perfect no, president no, no, that's either. That's fine. That's fine. Listen. And no, follow me. Follow me. I know. Me. I'm totally that's on your issue. page. That's your issue. Right. So that's it. So stay there, right? But you didn't. You went off and started talking about other things like the economy. And I'm like, no, no. no. If you want to talk about the economy. Then, I'm gonna, then we're going to talk about the economy. You want to talk about the environment, we're going to talk about the environment. You can talk about women's issues and stay right there. I guess. And I want you to stay there. Okay. Right? And it's great. Don't vote for Trump. Why would you vote for but Trump? No, but no, but I'm saying that, what I'm saying is that you're trying to say that, that and the, the point, if I'm understanding this correctly, of this lesson is that Democrats and Republicans, there's going to be equal ground amongst everyone, and the differences that we see are differences that we choose. No, I'm sorry, so, if I may, I'm yeah. sorry. No, please. Hang it's on. It's not hang on. your Larry job just... to draw a conclusion or a similarity between this young lady and Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton has gone through some things that, I, if I could name any women in this room, would have dealt with it far differently. Oh, all right, okay, then right? let me stick okay. with Barack Obama. She's also, she's also been subjected to a crazy amount of psychological damage okay. on a public platform that might subject her to okay, reacting ready? to it okay, on a different ready? level. But that one young woman has has a regular path through academia, okay, and ready? so she would react like anyone else in That's this room. Right. No, like, she's, you're reacting like I can imagine but You're holding anyone. her to the same such a div Seriously? No, I'm not. I'm yeah. holding. Listen, you ready? Watch. You ready? I'm going to go with back to Barack Obama. Okay, yeah, you ready? You go to this mic. next one. Just everybody have patience. We're talking about economics today. Another day we're going to talk about another issue. We're going to talk yeah, about dude, another issue. We're not just saying that they're exactly the same people, because obviously that's insane. Yeah, yeah. We're saying with this exact example, there are similarities between the two of them, and we have to look at that in order for us to get through everything else that's the difference Dude. between the other two candidates. Ex okay, next one. You ready? Okay, so here we go. It's one team. You ready? It's one team. Got it? So it doesn't matter. It's one team, but that's fine, because it's not just one team, because two men on there have proven themselves to be not worthy of much respect. Got it? Okay, but let's go to the next one. You ready? You know what this is? Let me talk about one team, y'all. You you let's talk about Barack Obama then. In 2006, local police agencies, local police agencies were given $60 billion, $30 billion in military-grade weaponry. 
machine guns, tanks, mortars, body armor, cannons, you name it, they got it, okay? 2015, $460 billion, directly pushed forward by Barack Obama, okay? Now, here's the deal. It's one team, y'all. You want to go, for example, now I'm just, gonna, I'm just complexifying it. Y'all, let's say you want to go or you want to go or I want to go protest against Trump or Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton or anybody. Local police forces are going to show up looking like that. And Obama pushed forward $460 billion worth of military-grade weapons. You know why? You know why? You know why? Because here, here's why. Go back. Go back, 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 right there. When you start doing that, and all that money's going into the top elite, it can only go so far before the people down here are going to start saying, hold on a second. Last Saturday, you had women protesting in D.C. and in countries all over the United States, and many men. But what happens when these people start protesting? Because this just gets too far. It gets out of hand. Maybe they don't. What happens what they do? Go forward. That's what happens right there. It's one team. Okay, so can I just talk about the first thing? Like, okay, talk about the whole entire money distribution, stuff like that. So for the whole entire of black people not getting, you know, the distribution of money and stuff like that, personally, people have the stigma that the presidential election is going to affect everything and everyone, which yeah, right. it's not going to. So in order for anything to change personally in, like, Penn Hills, I'm from Penn Hills, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So, yeah. so for anything to change back then, we have to elect. I, personally, when I look at it, all our officials and stuff like that, they're all corrupt. But people don't go hang to on, those. Hang on. They're not all corrupt, okay? Yes. Do, this, do, you understand what, do you understand what happened in Penn Hills? No, I got you. I got you. But they're, they're not all corrupt. Like, there's a system in place that mostly ensures that a certain group of people maintain the power structure. White people. Which is, which is the wealthy group, which mostly, the same one in Haiti. The same one in Haiti. So it's the same thing. So I hear what you're saying. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So when we are looking at the redistribution of wealth, yep. that is a trend that has happened all over the world because of globalization. And I have a lot of facts here. So if you look at the elephant graph, which puts the percentile of global income distribution and the real increase in income of all of the countries in the world, yep. every single country that is considered developing yeah. grew by tons and tons. The only groups that were affected uh -huh. by globalization negatively were the low and middle income families in rich countries. But this happened globally. This did not happen just in the United States, not just Here, in England, not just I in France. Listen. <clears throat> yeah. I have more to say. <laughs> okay. So, when you pick a president, the government can only do so much to redistribute wealth. One of those things are taxes, which Republicans are adamantly against raising because of they don't want anyone to take their money. And in order for to make change, you need to you have different ways of doing it, right? So you can either invest or lower taxes so that companies will magically make more jobs, which is what Republicans think, or you can do a more democratic way, which is increasing support to, to different pro social programs that will help people that are struggling so that they can go ahead and get jobs. Is that really the democratic way? Th there's, there's more ways than that, right? Yeah, so no, but is that, if that's you what look the at SNAP, the amount of food stamps that were given to people in Obama's presidency nearly doubled in his time there, so more people were fed. Yeah. If you look at... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Here's what you're doing, right? You're, you're, you're picking and choosing certain things, right, to make this point, and I'm picking and choosing other things to make a larger point. So we can pick certain things. Here's the difference, right? Did you support, did you vote for Clinton? I, yes, I did. And what are, what's the reasoning for you voting for Clinton? that she will continue to support social programs, that she will try to raise the minimum wage, that okay. she will... You mean like, like Barack Obama did? 
the same program? Like, you know what I mean? Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. My job is not right now. <clears throat> my job isn't, I, I could, you know, you know where I could go? First off, I do this for a living, right? So everything you said, I could just go at from so many angles. Like I can't even, my head is swimming. And I'm not going to do that because I, I love how you pulled data out and you're picking some really cool things. And you like made a very cool analysis in a very short period of time. So I dig that. That's what I want. That's what, I, that's what I'm hoping everybody in this class will do. Get your phones out, start looking at stuff and go at it. And... I could just go at it and dismantle it if I wanted to, as you could, if you had enough time, take this video, part of what I'm saying, and dismantle it in different ways. That's great. I want you to do that. Here's the thing. All I'm doing right now is picking out the things that I hear all the time about certain candidates, and certainly about Trump and Clinton and Obama, and I'm picking out the things that I hear most often that I can show you very different perspectives and say, why would you grab onto that? Yours, I can see grabbing on a hundred percent. But but the economy, like the what? Like what? Like Obama support this police state? Really? Police state? Like what if I'm supporting? So here's my question for you. So I'm supporting more food stamps to poor people through SNAP or whatever policies, but over here. You ready? But out here, what I'm doing is, I'm, I'm giving $460 billion of military-grade weaponry to local police forces that is primarily going to be used to assure that people on the bottom don't rise up. Don't get out of hand. I'll give you the snap. I'll give you those little increases, but the moment you start asking for more, I got people out here that are going to take care of that. So my question to you is, why is SNAP more important than that? That's like, that is like, that's the, this is right here, this is 1984. This is coming at us, y'all, right? This is 1984. Remember the police state. So in this police state, maybe it's illegal, for example, to say we're never going to have a president that says grab him by the pussy, but we're going to have, those are the police. So y'all, y'all want to go like out and protest because that or whatever, because uh, Penn State wins a basketball game or, That's yeah, not they win a basketball game. So you got it? So this is what's coming at us. So my question to you is this, right? And I so love what you're saying. What's your name, by the way? Juliana. What is it? Juliana. Rihanna? Juliana. Juliana. All right. Dude, remember, I have tinnitus. My question to you is, why is SNAP more important than that? Because I would think you as a brown woman, that right there, uh, there are lots of reasons that I could think like, oh, man, I got a problem. But I think that one, I'd be like, that's scary. That's scary. And what about in the last year? The 26,000 bombs that the Obama administration dropped on people in other countries that could increase the SNAP budget by, who knows, 100, 200, 500 fold, right? Increase? What about that? What about that? So that's just what that, so you know what I mean? That, that's what this is right now. So that's my question. I don't know. You don't have to answer. Don't answer it, right? But that's just where I want you. And everyone in class, like, that's where I want you. I want you to, I want to ask that question that you can't answer. And if you try to answer, I'm going to ask it in a different way so you can't answer. Not because I, I want to be smarter or whatever, because I don't want that. I just want you to have to answer questions that you can't answer. Because if I can get you to do that in here, I can get you to do that out there. I got an answer for this. I'll tell you why this isn't a problem. So it's like, okay, well, it's the police budget, military grade weapon. I can tell you why it's not a problem. I'm not going to tell you, but I have an answer. I can tell you why. But I want you to come up with that. Why isn't that a problem, man? Dudes, here's the deal. I have to do another. If I don't do, a, if I don't do another segment here, I got to do another segment. Because if I don't, y'all... I, you need to have something for the, for the video assignment, okay? So we cool? Dude, so you guys are done. Thanks, dog. Thanks, dog.
Thanks, Doug. Go ahead. All right, all right here. Let's do. Let's do. Let's do the. Dude, let's do this one though. Let's let's. What's that? How do you fix what? That, dude. <laughs> You go, you go out and protest, but do it really fast before they give another $460 billion, right? No, seriously, I am. Yeah, uh, listen, man. How do you fix it? Dudes. Ah... Uh, Dude, first off, ready? You're asking how you fix it, right? For, let me just say this. I don't get paid enough to provide answers, right? I get, all I do is get paid enough to challenge, to ask questions and to challenge, like with you. And you challenge me and I challenge you back. That's what I want. That's what I get paid for, y'all, right? That's it. So I don't have the answers. I don't can't give you answers. If I give you answers, then you got to stop thinking for your, you believe, you wrongly believe me, maybe. I hope you don't believe any, hardly anything I say. Listen, I got, I'm a, I got this thing I'm going to do. It's, oh, Doug, we're going to have to go back to the, we're going to do the, the, the gender one. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. What's up? All right, you ready? Okay, here. So, Here's one. Yeah, this one. This one goes out to the Trump people, I want to say real fast. All right. So here. So there seem to be double standards in place. This is a really short, I'm going to do a short segment so you all can use this. Um, there seem to be double standards in place. And Trump people, there really do seem to be double standards in place here. So go to the next slide. So here's a photo of, of Michelle Obama back in the... <laughs> Come on. Listen, man. Back in the... The arms, though, dog. So back in the day, quite a number of years ago, she wore, she wore this dress, and she was highly criticized, very heavily criticized, by, in particular, Fox News and those, those kinds of people, because it was too risque. All right? So... You know, it was like it was a really big deal. They said it was inappropriate for where she was wearing it and so on and so forth, right? Okay, next slide. So this is, um, this is our current first lady, right, of the United States. Wait, can I, am I allowed, I can, sh it's our first lady. I can show that, right? So here, this is pornography. This is the closest thing to pornography you will see in this class. And so people say, go back one. Well, okay, it's not pornography. It's not. I pulled it right off Google Images. All right. Dude, first off, it's troubling. It's deeply troubling because for me to see women portrayed like that is, you know, for me, it, it is really pretty deeply troubling because I just find it, why would you portray women in that way? I mean, it's silly. It's absurd. Why would you portray anybody like that? Like, 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 the, as though we're just bodies. You know what I mean? Like you were saying on the first day. So, in any case, so here's Michelle, heavily criticized for being um, too revealing. Here's the next one. Um, I would think that, and this goes out to the Trump people who are also Christians, I think about how is that, how would that in any way, forget about even what Trump said about women, how, how is that possible for Christians in particular I think of like the moral and ethical codes of Christianity and the things that family values perspective and all the family values people that, that voted for this guy. Where the fam Forget about grabbing by the pussy stuff, but how is that family values? You know what I mean? Like how do you really, how do you see that? Like where is that? And next slide. So here's another one, right? Here's Melania. And one of the things that's really important here, however, and now I'm going to take the other side on this, it's like, well, in truth, this is art. It really, in a way, is art. And so she's a model, and she, it's an artistic expression of a body, 
And it's not an artistic expression that I would support and that I would want to look at and that I do look at because I just don't, I don't, find, I don't live in that world as a man. I don't live in the world where I find looking at bodies in that way and certainly particular kinds of bodies. I don't, I don't, I, it is just not in my being to look at her and say, wow, she's really pretty. It's just not that. I don't live in that space. But it is an artistic expression at some level. And so here's, so here's another one. So here's Rihanna. So imagine that Rihanna, and so you see that, by the way, that's a shadow there. That's not a nipple. I'm not showing a nipple. <laughs> so here's Rihanna from Esquire magazine. So imagine, and this goes out to the, all of the feminist anti-Trump people out here for a second. So imagine that Rihanna marries, I don't know, uh, who's the guy from Paul Ryan from Wisconsin? Is he married? Let's say he leaves his wife. And he, and he marries Rihanna, right? And like, okay, really good. And so, and he gets voted, he's president of the United States in 12 years. And this image shows up, just like, go backwards, just like this image shows up. And how many people who find this to be really problematic and troubling and repulsive would nonetheless in 12 years say like, oh, but that's okay because that's just Rihanna being Rihanna. That's an artistic expression. That's just her. You know, it's a magazine cover. It's her. It's her. And so the, the, what I'm raising here is where are the, what about the double standards? If you can critique this, go back. If you want to critique this, which is not easy. It's not difficult at all to critique that and say like, what, what kind of like, what is this world that we're living in that this becomes just this space, whereas go backwards to a couple, whereas Michelle Obama, who by any standards, if you imagine, go forward one, imagine Michelle Obama in that photo. Imagine Michelle Obama in that photo. Imagine how Barack Obama in a million years would never have been elected president of the United States if that photo of Michelle Obama had come up at all. Never, ever, ever would have come up. Michelle, if, go back, if that is too revealing, if that's too revealing for a black woman, who's a high-powered, smart lawyer, if that's too revealing, go forward. That certainly would be too revealing. And the hypocrisy is just beyond reproach in a certain sense. It's, being, it's unbelievable. And yet, at the same time, there is a way in which, in truth, it's artistic expression, just like this. Okay, we have a guest who's got a quick announcement to make. Oh, and it's... Yo, hang on. L hang, listen, this is a special, a sp especially going out to oh. men and men and women of color. This is Ellen. Yo, can you not put your stuff away? We still have two minutes. This is Ellen. Go ahead. Do your it's thing. very yeah. hard to follow that. Uh, well, yeah. I believe that the way we walk in the world tells the story of who we are. And I think a lot of what you are going to experience in this class is going to help you decide what that story is. But I also have an opportunity for you to be outside the classroom walls and explore what your story is. And that place is called Outdoor School, and it's an opportunity for you.